Hi, everyone, and welcome to our celebrating Sawween event. So thank you for joining us. My name is Laura Hosford, and I am a visionary, a intuitive healer, a channel for the divine feminine, and a sort of other things, including a mom. <laughs> and so uh, just um, we're here today, Jennifer and I, to uh, just create this beautiful ritual and ceremony with you. And we're so looking forward to just sharing of the energies and coming together in a beautiful co-creation and creating a beautiful circle of love and of light and of healing and helping to uplift you for starting a new spiritual year, which is what this celebration is all about. So um, you can learn more about me and the Light Leaders Academy at my website, uh, laurahosfer.com, if you're interested. And I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer for her to introduce herself. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Escalera. I am an energy coach and spiritual counselor. I'm also a mom, a mystic, and I have an online school called The Mystic Living. And I help people to heal themselves and how to live um, their most authentic and intuitive life. I use different sacred instruments, uh, energy medicines. So I use sound healing, crystals, um, rituals, magic, um, all kinds of things that you can think of that would be really helpful for your energy system to clear those out so that you can heal also ancestral lineage. And I think that's what also brought me here today to be with you, Laura, is to be in the ce celebration of Samhain and um, to bring us all together so that we can remember and recognize our lineage and our ancestors and loved ones who have passed on. So I'm super excited about being here. And if you'd like to learn more about me, I'm at jenniferescalera.com. That's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. E-S-C-A-L-E-R-A dot com. So we will get started. Okay, so um, to start out, uh, before we get into the ceremonial ritual part, um, is to talk a little bit about what is this holiday uh, that's called Samhain or Samhain, which is actually not the same as Halloween. Mm -hmm. It is actually an ancient Gaelic festival. It marks the start of winter and the end of the har harvest seasons. The holiday is traditionally observed, though, from October 31st to November 1st, the midway point between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice period. Together with the holidays of Imbolc, Beltane, and Lunasius, Songway is one of the big four seasonal festi festivities in Gaelic culture. Samhain's roots are traced back to Ireland and Gaelic parts of ancient Britain and France. The holiday was first observed by the Celts at least 2,000 years ago, long before Halloween became associated with carved pumpkins and bats. According to History.com, the Celts linked the start of the long cold winter with death. The History website reads, Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. So on the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to earth, in addition to causing trouble and damaging crops, the Celts thought that the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or the Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. The Celts also believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. For a people entirely dependent on the volatile natural world, these prophecies were an important source of comfort and direction during the long dark winter. Originating in ancient Europe as a Celtic fire festival, Samhain is now celebrated worldwide. The timing of contemporary Samhain celebrations varies according to spiritual tradition and geography. Many of us celebrate Samhain over the course of several days and nights, and these extended observances usually include a series of solo rites as well as ceremonies, feast and gatherings with family and friends or even our spiritual community. 
In the Northern Hemisphere, many pagans celebrate Samhain from sundown on October 31st through November 1st. Uh, excuse me, others hold the Samhain celebrations on the nearest weekend or on the full or new moon closest to this time. Some pagans observe Samhain a bit later or closer to November 6th to coincide more closely with the astronomical midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. Most pagans in the Southern Hemisphere time their Samhain observances to coincide with the middle of their autumn in the late April and early May, rather than the traditional European time of the holiday. Some Celtic Wiccans and Druids call it Kalan Gaif or Kalan Gwaf or Kale Gof or Nos Galen Gof. In Welsh, it is known as Nos Sin Kalen Gol. It is also known as Ui Hune. A medieval book of tales, the Yellow Book of Lican, reports that common folk also called it the Feast of Monfind. This was the legendary witch queen who married a king of Tara in Old Ireland. Ireland. In the ancient colony calendar, an engraved bronze statue dating from the first century CE, which was dug up in 1897 in France, Samhain is called Ternoxen Samwaji, or the three nights of the end of summer. Samhain's long association with death and the dead reflects nature's rhythms and in many places, Samhain coincides with the end of the growing season. Vegetation dies back with killing frost, and therefore literally death is in the air. This contributes to the ancient notion that at Samhain, the veil is thin between the world of the living and the realm of the dead. And this also facilitates contact and communication. For those who have lost loved ones this past year, Samhain rituals can be an opportunity to bring closure to grieving and to further adjust to their being in the other world by spiritually communing with them. The ha this hallows ritual to mourn all who have passed or even stages of life, cultures, ecosystems, and even our ancestors before us. Remembering and speaking of the dead, honoring them in ritual is to give them life again. Making room in memory for our lost loved ones, our hopes, even our dreams, our ideals enrich us and makes us more spacious and alive. As we welcome them into our lives, they find openings in us to bring us blessings and wisdom from the other world. It is also the beginning of a new spiritual year. It is a festival of the dead and to honor our ancestors means summer's end and pronounced Sawin or Sawin. Again, it is a celebration of the end of the harvest and the start of the winter, the coldest and darkest half of the year. It is also known as the Witch's New Year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Laura, for that historical background. I mean, it all feels so beautiful and it's so wonderful that we and different cultures, different ethnic backgrounds share the same traditions as the mm -hmm. pagans and um, Celtics, the Irish, mm -hmm. and um, that brings into my heritage as a Mexican American, you know, in my family traditions, we celebrate the dead through Dia de los Muertos. And um, there are similar practices, similar rituals or similar ways that um, we as our uh, Mexican culture uh, invite the, the ancestors, our loved ones, and um, we give offerings. And so we also create altars and do um, similar things as the Samhain uh, rituals do. But there are definitely some other uh, practices that the Samhain celebrates that uh, Dia de los Muertos doesn't. But I just wanted to highlight that as a Mexican-American, that um, it's beautiful that we get to share um, different cultures. Um, but we all have um, some ways that we are all connected on a human level, on a, a soul level. So 
that was it. Oh, but I did want to share. Um, there are some other um, ethnicities that celebrate similar um, practices, uh, similar rituals, and hopefully I won't botch the names, but <laughs> um, there's Dia de Fininados. Dia de los Natitas. Um, oh, I can't even pronounce that. It's A R A W N G M G A Tate. Um, bon Festival, Chusuak, Qingming Festival, Gai Jatra, and there's other um, cultures that are very similar in the ways that the Samhain um, celebration is as well. So, just wanted to point that out in case. Um, you who are watching this, who are with us today, uh, want to invite your own family and ancestors that it's not just for um, the Celtics or pagans or witches, you know, it's, it's across all uh, cultures and all belief systems. Yeah, that's so cool, Jennifer. Thanks for sharing that um, with your own heritage, your own Mexican heritage. And I'm sure there could be other others that we don't even know about that had similar celebrations across the world. And yeah, if any of you have anything to add, please feel free, I think, to comment um, mm -hmm. when we post this um, up on the YouTube channel. We'd love to know, um, you know, more about your background and your culture and your uh, impressions of this. Absolutely. So, so now do we want to start the saging and burning of incense to start the purification part of the ritual, Jennifer? Yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. Do that. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to light the sage now. Okay. And so those of you who have any sage or any sacred burning, go ahead and do that with us now. Yeah, and also if you've prepared an altar, you might want to be sitting next to your altar. I'll show you my altar that I worked on earlier today. And I just thought it was really fun to um, kind of dress up the altar a little bit more today. I added some candles. I added a picture actually of my daughter and I um, to represent the family lineage and the ancestors. So, Ooh, you know. That's so beautiful. I love it. Oh, I love the goddess statue. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have her on there and got her. And um, yeah, thank you. So, and I have some sacred water on here uh, from my journeys to France and Britain. And I have, um, yeah, some healing candles and flowers. So, whatever you, uh, you know, want to, uh, it's really fun to create these altars, I think. So, um, mm -hmm. as part of this, you're getting a copy of. Um, how to create your own sacred altar and or uh, ancestors of the dead or whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just um, using some um, essential oil sage. Oh, nice. I love that, Jennifer. That's great. So I'm going to sage here, saging across the space and around. And just again, just cleansing and purifying the energies more here absolutely yeah the yeah. altars are so much fun i um wish i had my altar but my altar's at home so and you're <laughs> <open, so. laughs> but okay. it's fun to put that together sure all right so i think now we're going to move into um the casting the circle with opening meditation with the grounding and calling in the beings of light so um, I'll go ahead now and, and move into that, into the, the grounding meditation. Mm -hmm. All right. So I will ask everyone, wherever you are, um, to just get comfortable and just begin to relax and begin to first connect in with your breath because the breath is the Holy Spirit. And begin by finding yourself in a comfortable position. Just begin with placing your feet flat on the floor, or if you're sitting on the floor, that's fine, but just begin to imagine yourself connecting in with Mother Earth. And now just with your imagination, begin to see yourself walking into a meadow of beautiful green grass. 
now your feet begin to, and toes begin to step into the plush grass. Just begin to allow yourself to relax into allowing Mother Earth to support you totally. As you begin to feel this deep connection with Mother Earth, begin to bring all your awareness now to your breath. Now focusing on your breath, you begin to slow down your breathing into a nice, comfortable rhythm for you. As you continue to focus on the rhythm of your breath, begin to take deeper breaths, aligning with the pulse of the universe. As you continue to slowly breathe in and out, just notice how your breathing is a natural flow of inhaling and exhaling, just like the natural pulse of the universe. Contracting inward on the inhale and expanding outward on the exhale. Feeling into this rhythm and natural flow of life moving in and through you as you continue to breathe slowly and deeply. As you do, you now begin to notice a great stillness rising up in the center of your being. You begin to connect with this deep stillness located in the center of your heart space. As you connect with this deep stillness, you see or feel an opening in your heart center, now inviting you softly to enter into this beautiful place of stillness and unconditional love. As you enter into this beautiful sacred heart space, you continue to feel the universal rhythm of life of the mother flowing deeply within your being. Now begin to call in and connect with your own greater I am presence by communing and calling it into your heart. Breathing in the beautiful energies of Divine Mother and Divine Father, the forces of light, the angelic kingdom, and our very own masters, teachers, and loved ones to join in this beautiful sacred circle of light as we come together. And now we can begin to call in support from the elements of earth, wind, fire, water, and ether, the elemental kingdom, the mineral kingdom, and even the power animal kingdom to join with us in this beautiful sovereign and sacred container of light that we are now co-creating together. Now focusing on the center of your head, just begin to bring all your awareness into the present moment, including all thoughts from the past and the future into the now moment. As you do, you begin to fill up your internal core and being with all your beautiful presence, filling up the space behind your eyebrows and in the front of your spine, all the way down to the base of your spine, like you're filling up a tube of light with your own internal core. Once you feel your core is completely filled up, Begin to move this beautiful energy down to the base of your spine, down into your legs, down into your feet and toes, creating a crystalline platform of grounded light beneath you. Now begin to connect your crystalline platform of light by grounding it into the new fifth dimensional Mother Earth grid below your feet. Now begin to bring your awareness to the base of your spine and just begin to feel or imagine yourself create a wide grounding cord about two feet in diameter. Begin to drop this grounding cord down to the center of Mother Earth, into the fifth dimensional Mother Earth and begin to feel the weight of your grounding cord pulling you down so that your buttocks are firmly anchored into your chair. As you reach the center of the earth, you see a large golden white ball of light. Take a moment to just plug the end of your grounding cord into this beautiful ball of white light. 
as you do begin to make a mental note of how securely you are held by your grounding cord and how safe and supportive you feel. This beautiful golden white ball of light is your pure source of unconditional love, always providing you with the energy that you need and also serving as a recycling plant to transmute any lower energies that you want to release at any time into higher vibrational energies of light when needed. And now bringing your awareness to the bottom of the feet, feel the light begin to rise up and move in a fast swirling motion, turning in a counterclockwise direction. It begins to move up your spine. As it does, it begins to activate the opening of each fifth dimensional chakra. As you keep moving up out the top of your head, continue to move upward into your soul star chakra about six inches above your head. Continue to see or feel this light moving up higher and higher and keep it going upward until you reach the highest, brightest point of light that you can see or connect to. This is your divine star point of light. And now see or feel yourself plugging into this divine star point of light. Now you have created a pillar of light connecting you from the center of the earth up through the, your being all the way up to your divine star point of light. And now you can begin to see or feel yourself merging with this beautiful pillar of bright golden light. And as you do, it begins to connect you more deeply, bringing you into more alignment with your unique soul divine blueprint. As you continue to immerse yourself in this beautiful golden white light, you begin to bring in your unique frequency of light. Begin to drop it down into the top of your crown, spiraling down in a counterclockwise position direction. Begin to allow it to fuse with every cell and molecule of your body. Take a moment now to connect with this light of your own beautiful soul light and frequency. And just ask for it to provide you with energy and nourishment for your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual light bodies. As this light continues to pour in your body, you may even feel a tingling or a warm flowing energy. You just allow this energy to continue to wash over you, now awakening your cells with the memories of your own beautiful divine I am self. Continue to say yes as you breathe in these beautiful energies, allowing them to continue to work on your behalf, to bring to you rivers and rivers of abundance and prosperity, of joy and compassion and happiness into your life in each and every moment for your highest good and the highest good of everyone connected to you. And now gently bringing your awareness back to your beautiful heart, sacred heart center and placing your hands on your heart. Just begin to acknowledge and claim your own divinity as a beautiful co-creator with all that is the creator, the universe, the divine Sophia God. And begin to claim as a free and sovereign being of eternal light and love to begin to fill your heart with gratitude, with grace, with wisdom and compassion for yourself and all beings of the one true self. And now just taking in a deep, deep breath. And just continuing to anchor those energies in, allow them to attune you, allow them to raise your frequency and vibration for your highest good and adding any other intention that you would like along with that beautiful energy of support.
And now I'm going to take a moment to light the white candle. Now bringing in the new spiritual year. And then we'll go ahead and cast the circle. Yep. Thought I was going to light the candle. <laughs> <laughs> I already lit my candle. I lit it at the beginning. Okay, I'll light this one. So should we light the candle um, for those who are listening? Um, should we light the candle at the end or the beginning? Or watching, I should say. People are watching this, not this. Um, <laughs> at any time they feel called to is fine. Okay. And I'm just using selenite to just kind of clear the air as we welcome in our ancestors. Beautiful, thank That's you. Fine. Aligning okay. with your energies. Okay, beautiful. So now I'm going to go ahead and call in the setting up the wheel elements prayer next. Okay. All right. So calling in the winds of the south to the masters of waters. To the great serpent, wrap your coils of light around us and teach us to shed the past the way you shed your skin. To walk softly on the earth, teach us the beauty way. And to the winds of the west, to the master of the earth, to mother jaguar, protect our medicine space, teach us the way peace to live impeccably, show us the way beyond death. And to the winds of the north, to the master of the air, to the great hummingbird, grandmother and grandfather, to the ancient ones, come warm your hands by our fire. Whisper to us in the wind. We honor you who have come before us, those who will come after us, our children and our children's children. And to the winds of the east, to the master of the fires, to the great eagle condor, come to us from the place of the rising sun. Keep us under your wings and show us the mountains we only dare to dream of and teach us to fly wing to wing with the great spirit. And to Mother Earth, to the sacred powers of the universe, the masters of metal and wood, we pray for the healing of all our children, the stone people, the plant people, and the four-legged, the two-legged, the creepy crawlers, the finned, the furred, and the winged ones, the elemental of all levels of beings and all our relations. And to the highest vibrational masters, the Christ consciousness and all those closest to the heart of the creator, to father, son, and grandmother moon, to the star nations, great spirit, you who are known by a thousand names, you are the unnameable one. Thank you for bringing us together and allowing us to sing the songs of life another day. So be it, so it is. This or something greater. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. So now we're going to pull some cards. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I feel it. Ooh, I feel it too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope who's watching feels it too. Like, I, I want to stay there, but I guess I'm there now, so I don't, I don't know. It's whatever perception, right? I can still stay aligned in that. Absolutely. The circle's been passed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're going to just be picking a card. Um, is it one we're picking? I forgot. Um, whatever you feel like. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Awesome. So this is for everyone um, and uniting um, with the goddess uh, energies and um, 
what our ancestors or what our um, loved ones, our guides may want us to, to know about this um, time of the year for our uh, spiritual growth as we move into the new spiritual year. So I'm going to go yeah. ahead and pick one. Okay. Go ahead. Ooh, time of follow. Creative manifestation occurs more easily when I have nurtured myself and honored my time of follow. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. Ooh, that's a cool card. That is a very cool card. So it's lovely that it's creative manifestation because that's one of the the spells that we're going to do today is on um, the fire magic of manifestation for the new year. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So make sure. Beautiful. Make sure some type of creative manifestation and nurture yourself and honor your time of follow. Okay. And I'm going to pull a card from the divine feminine Oracle guidebook. And that's the guidebook. And I'm going to pull a card of who would like to come forward today as one of our divine goddesses with a message for our circle today and everyone who's here co-creating with us for the new spiritual year to give us some guidance, some wisdom, um, some direction. All right. So let's just see what card wants to come out. All right, so it looks like this one wants to come out. And we have White Buffalo Calf Woman, Ooh. the prophetess of the sacred way. My heart is a compass. The path of love is true abundance. Ooh, another abundance. I'm loving it. Abundance and creativity. I had to look up fallow because I forgot what that meant. Uh -huh. and a fallow, um, a farmland plowed and harrowed, but left unsown for a period in order to restore its fertility as part of a crop rotation or to avoid surplus production. So I, I'm assuming like this is in the time of fertility or cropping and rebirth, regrowing, re yeah, rebirth which is awesome because it's totally significant to this Samhain ceremony. <laughs> it really is. I mean, like, wow, that just nailed it. You know, that just nailed the whole thing in <laughs> one card. <laughs> wow. So I will share what, uh, about white buffalo calf woman. Just love her. Love her energy. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. A little bit more. Um, so she is the prophetess of the sacred way. My heart is a compass. The path of love is true abundance. How beautiful is that? Mm -hmm. Who is she? She is, she represents the sacred vision that gives us hope that all will be provided for us. Pets and we or white buffalo calf woman is the primary cultural prophet of the Lakota religion. Buffalo are considered sacred to the plains people and are seen as messengers from the ancestors. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and I think you have some of that, right? Some ancestry. Yes. A Lakota legend says that two young scouts went out in search of food during a famine. They saw a stunningly beautiful woman appear before them in a radiant white light. The first scout approached her with an unholy with unholy intentions. And the second scout watched as the first man turned to bones the instant he tried to touch her. She was clearly Lila Wecken, very holy. Thankfully, he knew this. She asked him to approach her because she could see into his heart and knew his intentions were good. She told him to prepare for her arrival in the village. He went back and gathered everyone together. She appeared before them and taught them the seven sacred rites of the Lakota people, yeah. including the sacred pipe ceremony that binds men and women together in a circle of love and mutual respect. Oh. 
And so it says when your soul selects this card, that white buffalo calf woman is a sacred reminder that we don't have to struggle to receive all that we deserved, desired. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right. When we join our hearts longing with action, we find that there's a sacred way to move through the world. This sacred way is a path of steady, quiet alignment between the heart's intention and our every step. White Buffalo Calf Woman is an omen of hope that all will be provided for us when we approach each situation with love. Mm -hmm. What she wants to focus on is the intention behind an action because that changes the outcome. She's a sacred prophetic sign that we can receive what we need without fighting for it or trying to secure it through manipulation. When prayer jolts right action, when we move from the intention of creating only more love, then abundance is inevitable. And when we seek not just for ourselves, but also for the benefit of our loved ones and community, our needs are divinely met. The most sacred path is the one abundant with love. Nice. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is so on point. And because of this time of the year, you know, there's our magic, our capacity to use magic um, really is heightened. The vibration, the frequency of receiving this abundant and sacred information for us to trust in the divine order. I mean, that's just, it's very powerful. So I hope those who are watching really feel the significance in your life of the messages that the divine, the sacred, our ancestors want us to hear so that we could live out our, our fullest potentials and love. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Thank you so much. Beautiful. So um, do we want to now call in the energies of the goddess, Venus, yeah. the goddess energies of, these, of this goddess, uh, We'll call in white buffalo calf woman to the circle. Oh my gosh, yes. We got to put her on the altar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me put her on the altar. Absolutely. That's Let me do so that. That's so beautiful. I got to find a buffalo now or some picture of a buffalo and put her on, um, on my altar at home. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. For sure. So I have put her on the altar. Okay. And so her energies are present. And then we also have your card as well jennifer and those beautiful energies and yeah so when you're ready we'll just take yeah. a moment to call in the goddess i am ready i got my bowl and this is uh for the root chakra this okay. i also thought would be significant this is in the a note of c and i thought it would be significant to um, not only ground us, but as we're connecting with our ancestors, that family lineage, if we need to heal any ancestral trauma, that we um, set that intention to clear out any blocks that's preventing us from living our highest good. Wow. And this is, a, this is actually the high heart chakra, or actually it's the, the key of the high C. So it's actually up here. Uh-huh. The crown and this connects in with the soul star chakra, so this will help to open. So, we've got I think it, a bridge of light here covered yes, from intersection to the root. Yeah, um, awesome. Are you ready? Ready, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
So I'm going to be reading a poem called I Am the Crone. I am the oldest of the old, wisest of the wise, the power behind power. I am Hekat, Hek, Serwedwen, Kali, Kalech, Hel, Saibel, Morgan, Allah, Mara. I am the old hag of many names. I am the light in the dark and the dark of the moon. I'm the one behind the veil, the threshold to be crossed. I am the dealer of death, giver of rebirth. I am the greatest of teachers with the deepest of lessons. I am transition and connection, the spider in the web. I am dusk, midnight, and the dark before dawn. I am surrender when you need to let go. I am the chill wind in autumn, the whisper of winter. I am the three-way place, the center of the crossroads. I am the all-seeing owl, the frog under the mud, the flesh-eating vulture, the raven and the wolf. I am the destroyer and your protector as well. I am the one to lead you through the dark, through the fire, into a new day. I am the crone, oldest of the old, wisest of the wise, the power behind power. So bringing in her goddess crone energy, I hope you can feel that, the significance of the dualities of all of that, the significance of rebirth, birth, and death and rebirth. So now I want to talk about how to build an altar for your um, ancestors uh, or your loved ones. And hopefully you had a chance to download um, the copy. If for whatever reason you had difficulty getting it, please let me know and or put a comment in below and I'll make sure to, to send it to you again. Sometimes um, using the email providers, they go to people's spam. So. Um, but yeah, you will definitely get it. So I just wanted to go highlight some of those um, ideas. So Laura, you actually have some visually that maybe I can talk about while I look at, look up the PDF that I have. Um, With the altar? Yeah. Yeah, let me do that again for those who may have missed the altar. This was the one that I had set up earlier today. So you can kind of see here on my particular altar, very much um, have uh, the theme of, for my ancestors. I have a picture of my daughter and I, this nice little picture here that was done a few years ago, and um, to represent all of our lineage, our spiritual lineage of all the women before us um, and our spiritual gifts coming down. I have the goddess here um, because I carry uh, more feminine energy than masculine energy, and I'm actually a emissary for the Divine Mother, Sophia God. So um, you'll see uh, Mary Magdalene on here for Divine Feminine. You'll see Kuan Yin on here. Oh, I, who awesome. Well, because I love Kuan Yin. <laughs> yes, bring it on. I also have this vial of very sacred waters, healing waters from Southern France and from the Chalice Well in Glastonbury um, and Lourdes, France as well here on the altar. I have some salt because salt is representing the minerals of the earth and our bodies must have minerals in order to live. We have to have salt. So this is connecting us again with Mother Earth. 
um, I had this beautiful crystal here from Lourdes, France of St. Bernadette, who is kneeling before Mother Mary. And some candles and some flowers. So just whatever comes to your heart, whatever calls to you to set up your altar, you can give it a theme like I have, honoring particularly the divine feminine nature of my own lineage, or you can make up anything you want. Just get co-creative and have fun. All right. So some ideas of where to um, put your altar or where you want to set things up. So first you're want to, you're going to want to create a sacred space. So like in Laura's situation, she has, is it on top of a dresser or a table or where is that at? It's actually a little table that I have in my meditation room. <laughs> okay, okay, awesome. So you're gonna clear out the space, and so you're gonna use sage or palo santos or some type of way, energy, reiki, any type of way that you can clear the space to welcome in your ancestors. And so like for my family and I, we have our altar on top of the fireplace mantle. So just find a spot where you won't, uh, so it won't get um, disturbed. So if you have cats or animals or kids, you know, you're going to want to put it in a place where it's not going to get knocked down or there's not going to be any way of disturbance. So go ahead and find your space. And then think about what are some of the things that represent your loved ones or your ancestors. So think about them or... Um, maybe there's a picture or there's an item of theirs that you want to put on the altar. So um, if you need some time right now to think about what you want to add on your altar, go ahead and pause the video and write some things down. And then when you're ready to create your altar, you can go ahead and, and place your items on there. So to be more specific, um, in the traditions of the Samhain uh, festivities, um, there's some foods and crystals and incense and spices that people use during this time. So I'm going to just give you some ideas. So some foods um, you can put on your altar are pumpkins, um, apples, acorns, squash, grains, beer, ale or cider, uh, some hazelnut spread, if you want to make some pumpkin bread or scones or muffins, soup, anything like that, you know, this would be a good time to eat those things as well as to put them on your altar. So they represent this time of the season. Some spices or incense, you can use nutmeg, sage, sandalwood, rosemary, sweet grass, palo santo, pumpkin, cinnamon, cloves, hazelnut, or allspice. And then some crystals, which are really awesome, is, I mean, these are all my favorites, uh, obsidian, and that's good for protection. So if you um, are going through some generational or ancestral um, healing, you're going to want to protect your family and yourself from any negative entities or negative energies. So protecting your altar and, and the the connections that you're having with your ancestors. Uh, black tourmaline, uh, that's helpful for detoxing the mind, body, and spirit. So again, because um, this time of the year is a very sensitive time between both worlds, you just want to cleanse and clear out at this point. You know, if you're going to set an intention to reset, uh, black tourmaline would be uh, ideal crystals to place in your altar and on yourself. So <laughs> you can use those to help detoxify. Um, onyx, again, that's to help to transform negative energy. So we're clearing out any negative space or any blocks, something that isn't supporting abundance. You can use the onyx um, crystal energy to help release and remove. Um, and also, it, it will help you to find forgiveness if there are some uh, loved ones or ancestors that you need to, to forgive. This would be um, a good crystal to use. Uh, smoky quartz, that's for uh, grounding and cleansing. So you can um, leave those there to help cleanse the energies of 
of your loved ones and or from yourself. And carnelian, this is for vitality and courage. So if you're feeling low energy or if you're feeling low vibrations, low connections with your ancestors, adding some carnelian there on your altar or around your own um, sacred body would help to create the, the connection with your ancestors. Also some um, ways to kind of like jazz up your altar is to have um, a broomstick, some twigs, some leaves, um, candles, so using white candles. I think you have some white candles there, right? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a tarot card. So like if you had any tarot cards or any type of guidance cards, you know, pull one for yourself or pull one and ask your ancestors what would be specific for you to know. Um, pull out a card and then put it on your altar. And then flowers. So see how Laura has some flowers there. Um, and depending on maybe what kind of flowers that your ancestors liked or if there's um, any significant um, flowers that are meaningful to you, you know, you're honoring your ancestors. Um, I think you said you have water there, right? I do. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to put some water um, there and that also helps to um, clear out the energy, but it also gives um, your ancestors um, some water during these times of travel. Because traditionally, um, during this time, as our ancestors are traveling from the worlds, um, they also need um, nourishment. So giving them food and giving them water can help to replenish their energies. So um, that's really kind and helpful um, for them to continue on their travels. So, all right. So the next thing that I want to go over is the, um, the fire spell. So let me get out a piece of paper. Ooh. So what you're going to do is get a piece of paper. You know, it doesn't matter what size. And there's going to be two uh, fire spells. We're going to do one that is to manifest. Since this is the spiritual new year, you know, what are your intentions or what are your goals? I think the white buffalo, she mentioned about setting or having your attention to what you want to manifest. So I'm so glad she came through because that is so true. So go ahead, again, pause if you need to get a piece of paper and something to write with. Uh, go ahead and do that and get out um, your piece of paper and write down what you want to manifest for the year. Jennifer, and, I could also share from the White Buffalo Calf Woman. Uh -huh. She has a, what is my intention for the work I am currently doing is another possible question. What is the what? What is my intention for the work I am currently doing? Oh, I really like that because that's like inviting us to really ask the intention around the spiritual work that we're doing in the world. Right. So also when we're manifesting um, this spell, we're also looking at things that we want to um, change or what is it that we're wanting to attract? What kind of energies? Um, like I'm always working on abundance and prosperity. So I'm going to want to be manifesting more prosperity into my life, whether it's material money or um, uh, personal prosperity, like my health and my well-being. Um, I'm going to be adding those into my um, little manifestation uh, spell here. So once you're done um, writing out what you want to manifest, also if there's a goddess or god that you um, associate to or an angel, you can also ask them to bless this um, spell that you want to create. And once you're done, um, let me finish mine really quick. Um, okay. So once you're done, you're going to fold it this way, halfway, 
and then you're gonna fold it towards you. So it needs to go inward. So when you're casting a spell, you're adding that energy to move inwards. You're inviting that manifestation. And then you go ahead and you fold it again towards you. And then you're gonna burn it. So I'm gonna just quickly burn it here. So I can't let it burn fully. So you're gonna wanna do this outside. I'm in my, my office right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And so then you just let it burn. And then let once it's all in one piece, I'm actually going to go put this outside um, so it can continue burning. Um, once it's all ash, then you can just go ahead and um, bury it into Mother Earth. Or you can flush it um, down. OK, so once you're done with your other manifestation spell, you can also add in a fire release spell. And this is a spell to help you to release anything that isn't of your highest good, that isn't serving you. It's going to be part of your shadow work. So let's say that, you know, if you're dealing with ancestral trauma, I'm not sure why I keep concentrating on that. I mean, that's one of my specialties, but it, it's coming through. So <laughs> there must be something for us all to hear. Um, that if there are some family um, traumas or um, stressors, um, disconnections with your families, that this fire release spell can be an example of what you would want to release out into um, the, the spirits, into your ancestors. What can they do to help to relieve you from any pain? So think about it and go ahead and begin to write down what is it that you want to release or what is it that you want to um, work on through your shadow work. And if you're not familiar, familiar with shadow work, it's basically the parts of us that we try to suppress or the, the things that we're not so fond of. They're not our strengths. You know, they're not the highlights of who we are. <laughs> and um, Laura, I don't know if there's any other significance, but that's just kind of like how I see our shadow work um, and the significance that is to us. Yeah, parts that we've denied or parts that we kind of don't want other people to see in the world because we want to wear this mask or we've got it all together all the time and we're perfect and that's just not really being a human. So parts of you denied, repressed, or you haven't really honored and haven't been able to really look at, it's okay to start a process where you can begin to maybe invite those energies or those voices to sh begin to speak with you inside. And yeah, begin to sh you. exactly. So what are some of those shadows that you can release and they can be transferred into higher vibrations and higher energies that help you to um, be whole and accept all of you, the shadow and the light, and bring about more abundance. So again, go ahead if you want to pause this and write down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write mine. So, okay. So then what you're going to do is, again, you're going to fold it, but now you're folding it away from yourself. You're sending it out. <laughs> Go away, release, bye-bye. <laughs> and then you fold it away from you again. Okay, and then you burn it. I'm not gonna burn this one because it smells like smoke in my office, so. <laughs> but you get the idea. So you're gonna burn this and just, you know, allow your ancestors, allow your loved ones, your guides to um, help to lighten you to help to enlighten you so that you can be your highest um, fullest self so I hope that you found those helpful for you they're lots of fun and they're really really easy and quick so beautiful thank you Jennifer for the, bringing this really powerful I can feel the energy moving and flowing with that and that was so beautiful and they were so simple and but yet they were powerful so thank you for sharing those with us so I think we're pretty much to the end of our ceremony. So oh. I think <laughs> now close the circle. And I just know. I'm like, I'm enjoying being in this circle. This oh. is so good. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, you know, the cool thing is that the energy is still here. So we created a hologram and you can come back and you can replay this ritual, re-engage with the energy, allow it to move in and through you. We did the meditation to align with your higher your highest vibration of your soul and your beautiful divine light. So you can come back and you can just either listen or replay parts of this today. So I just take invite you to take a moment, bring your hand to your heart and just breathe in just all the beautiful, beautiful light and love and energies of divine mother, divine father, your own I am presence, all the beautiful ascended beings of light that joined us today in the circle, including all of our own higher selves, our highest guides, our masters and teachers, our ascended masters, our angelic, beautiful beings of light. And just breathe that energy in, the goddess energy that was here, represented by white calf buffalo woman. Yeah, the beautiful energies of the card brought in that Jennifer had. So just breathing in, just saying a thank you in our hearts and giving great gratitude for all the love, all the healing. And I can really feel that coming in now, even more intensely as we're closing the circle, filling up this hologram for you. So yeah, so be it, so it is. This or something greater, amen. So just coming back into the circle and just closing up, just wanna say thank you everyone for, co-creating the circle with us today thank you from my heart and bringing your beautiful light and your beautiful love to this sacred circle today and thank you for joining us yes thank you so much for joining us this was so lovely i'm like ah i feel so good <laughs> thank Ooh. you all and please uh comment below um what you felt what you experienced um and if there's any questions please uh, comment below Great. Thank you all for joining us. Much love to you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Peace and love.